One of the coolest parts of this app, I think, is that it implements both a network client and a network server. So it's a little weird, okay? What's normal about this is that modern applications usually don't have the information that they need to work. They have to retrieve it somehow. Usually that involves asking a server that's located on some other computer or maybe in the cloud somewhere for that information and the server returns a response. Usually that server runs on some other computer and you, when you build an app, you're frequently building the client. But I wanted you to see both parts. And so what we did is we put them in the same app. So you actually, when your app starts up, it starts a server that runs within the same application. And then it also starts up a client that communicates with that server to retrieve data. You will need to understand both of these pieces of code and modify them in future parts of the MP. And in doing so, you will get to experience something that is sometimes known as full stack development. This is very unusual um, to be able to do in such a compact app. So in this walkthrough, I'm gonna go through the client, I'm gonna go through the server, show you how they interact with each other, and then show you how they get used by the app. So all this code is in this network um, directory. This is the client. The client is the part that would normally run in the app. So this is a normal part of an Android application. The server is a strange thing to have as part of the Android application, at least outside of development purposes. But for the purposes of the MP, we're gonna look at both. The client is responsible for making requests to the server and then passing the data back to whoever requested it. So right now, the, this client has one method which is responsible for retrieving a list of summaries that's used to render the list of courses that are visible when the app starts up. This method is called get summary. You might be wondering who uses this method. Aha, the main activity. When the main activity starts, one of the things that it does and I've, I've got some log tags in here that I'll, we'll keep because these are useful. Uh, one of the things that it does is it calls, uh, it calls the application to get the course client. Remember the application has this um, getter that returns the client that, it's that it creates when it starts up. And then it calls get summary. The client provides a method called get summary. That method takes a year, a semester, and now this is important and we're gonna come back and talk about this in a minute. When you do certain types of requests on Android, you have to provide what's called a callback. The callback is a way for the code that's completing the request to notify you when it's done. So rather than waiting for the request to complete, we provide an interface containing methods that get called when the request completes. The main activity implements this interface. So it implements course list adapter dot listener. That's an interface that's defined right here. Uh, sorry. It's not the wrong one. Client.course client callbacks. That's the interface. So this is an interface that's defined as part of the client class. Right now it has one method. Later, you'll add to this. Potentially, there are other ways to do this, but you might want to add things here. Not for this particular part of the MP. Um, we're just getting started. So what happens here, and I'm not going to go through every piece of this code, is the client knows how to make a request to the server. This is really the equivalent of running um, like, and actually, I think I can actually even do this. So let's start this up um, and let's go over here and let's do, let's work. Uh, no, it won't. Uh, and in fact, I actually think that, oh no, that works okay. Um, yeah, never mind me. Let's just, let's just focus on this. So, um, so this is actually making uh, requests to the server for data, um, and the server is going to return something. The way to do this is we create a request using Android's uh, one of Android's networking libraries called Volley. Volley allows us to set up a request. In order to make an HTTP request, we need to know the URL that we are requesting from. In this case, the URL is constructed, and I can put, uh, and actually I already have a log tag here, so we'll see what this URL is, by taking the location of the server, then adding summary, and then the year slash semester. That's, there's no law of the universe that said that's how that has to be. That's just what we've decided on as part of the app. And I'll show you the server code that interprets that in a minute. So we make the request, and then when we're done, what we get back from the server is actually a string. Um, remember serialization, converting things to strings, converting them back, this is why. The server sends me back a string. 
I'm going to interpret that string as being a list of summaries, and then I'm going to use Jackson to deserialize that list into those summary model objects. This is all coming together in this beautiful synergy. Um, so that's what happens right here. Then what I do is I say, oh, okay, well, somebody requested this data. I need to hand it back to them, and I use the callback here to pass the course, uh, the, the array of courses back to the, the, the client that called it. That's the main activity and its callback is registered down here. And so I've got actually tags here to show us all the steps of the process. So let's, um, let's oh wait, sorry, I wanna show you the server. So this server, uh, again, is something that you wouldn't normally get to write as part of this type of MP, but we're actually going to have you do it because it's really cool. Um, the server, the, the main, so what, here's what happens in the server. The first thing that gets called is this dispatch method. And it's responsible for figuring out what to do with the request. It does this based on the path. This is very, very normal. So normally the server takes the path and it uses that to figure out what to do. Uh, and we, we have a printout here. In this case, what's gonna happen is the path is gonna start with the string summary. That's because of how we constructed it. Remember the client, see this? We took the server URL, which ends with slash, and we appended the summary in the year and the semester. And so when we get to the server, this part of the if statement is going to be true. And so we're gonna call get summary. Get summary is defined up here. That's a method that's part of the server. It takes that summary, it splits it into two pieces to retrieve the year and the semester. And then it uses that to retrieve the data. Now, you might be wondering like, well, okay, but where's the data data, right? Where's the data that's coming from? We gave that to you. Here's the summary data for 2020 fall. Now. Right now, this only contains CS courses and it's only for, some, uh, for fall 2020. If at some point you get ambitious and you decide you wanna actually deploy this app in the real world, we can actually set you up with a server that can provide you with summaries for the entire uh, university um, and for other semesters. Uh, but for now, this is the data that we're using to test your MP. Um, so we have this information and you can look at this and you can think about how this matches that summary model that we provided. And then we also have uh, more detailed information here that you'll use for, for a later part of the MP. Okay, so the server sends me back a string. When I ask for summaries from fall 2020 or 2020 fall, it sends me back this JSON string that contains all the summaries just for the CS courses. And that was just done as an optimization. The, the, big, the bigger list is quite a bit larger. Um, and plus, why would you want to take other courses? Um, so anyway, so we pass you back the list of the CS courses. The client then deserializes that list into summary objects and then passes them back to the main activity. The main activity uses that as part of this list adapter library that we're using to actually render the list. So what happens here is I call listadapter.edit. That means I'm going to start to edit the list of courses that are shown. I say replace all, that replaces the entire list with the courses that I received from the client. So let's see it in action here. Um, so let's hit stop. And now we're going to, uh, I'm gonna open my log cat log and I'll hit go again. And we're gonna look for, I'm gonna get rid of this. We're gonna look for um, messages, those messages that we just put in there. Um, and so, Let's see here. Oh, I need to put on debug because these are debug messages. Okay, so the, the first message we see is from the main activity requesting courses. Uh, so that's right, sorry, that's right here. That's before we call get summary. The next thing we see is from the client requesting course summaries and here's the URL. So I constructed this URL from the location of the server, which is on your own machine at a particular port using a number that I like, slash summary slash 2020 slash fall. Now again, that's up to us. It, we're gonna set up a protocol for this you're expected to follow, but you can actually use anything there you wanted. As long as it contained the information that we need, we need to know what year and what semester to get courses for, right? The next thing you'll see is that, uh, let's see, where is the server? Uh, here we go. Uh, so the server says it received a request with path. Now the server takes off the first part of the URL, so it just looks at the last part, summary 2020 fall, and then the, uh, the client says it's gonna receive a server response. So now the server has sent us back data and the main activity prints out how many summaries we received. Um, if you wanna see, if you just wanna convince yourself 
that the data that's getting uh, passed back is actually uh, the, the, literally the contents of that file that I showed you. Um, response is a string. And so what I can do here is I can rerun the app and I'll, uh, in when the client gets a response back from the server, um, I'll just have it print the entire string uh, before we have Jackson do the deserialization. And now you'll see, oh, I've got to turn on verbose because this is verbose. Okay, the whole thing's in here. So this is basically that whole JSON array with all the different objects for each summary. Um, so again, this is not code that you're gonna have to modify for this assignment, but you will probably need to come back to this in the future because for part two and part three or part one and part two of the MP, uh, we will have you make changes to both the server and the client as you continue to build out this full stack Android application.